All right, folks, we looks like we're all here, so go ahead and uh, th throw yourself any buffs that you want. Thanks for coming. We'll be going over um, all parts of this raid. We do have a couple of first-timers and a couple of people that have just run it uh, like once or maybe a couple times on Heroic as well. Alright, watch your step. Go ahead and you can leave the ship and go into the big ghostly looking astrolabe thingy here. You said, you said astrolabe. That's what it is. Everybody but Ziff and his pike at the entrance. That's okay. He doesn't need to know how to do this. He already knows. Uh, so there's gonna be a little bit, a little bit of a fight here, folks. Uh, if you look up, you can see Dreads up on the, like the ledge. You can get up there by there's a, a staircase that's almost invisible right where I am. So sometimes archers or uh, casters will come up here and just range them down from up here. It's not really necessary anymore. Usually you join a group and they're you know everybody's so over level and overpowered but uh... a transparent clone of the person in the plains entrance hey Baz welcome buddy we, we were just uh... explaining the first fight just started so come on in so here there's going to be some spellcasters and then some tieflings and uh, and, and there's going to be a named bearded devil too. And if you're a melee or a range tune, you're going to want to use uh, cold iron or good for demons or um, silver and good for devils. Is that right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Good and silver for. Yep. Just like you did. And uh, I'm bad. I'm really bad with DR stuff because I never play melees. And then somebody was saying in guild earlier that you you can have one or the other will work fine, but for bosses you need to have both. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. Yep. Red melee. I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. Thanks for the bubble head. There are quite a few shrines in this raid, so if you're a caster, uh, mana is usually not too much of an issue in here. Alright, go ahead and step through the portal in the center there. And anybody that's new, I want you to go ahead and step into the Rusty Nail Tavern here. And anybody that already knows what they're doing can just go to the top of the steps. The uh, 
map for this raid is the marketplace. And the, the theme of the raid is the devil invasion that took place. And if you played this game for a long time, you may remember that there was an actual event years ago. Uh, but this was before my time, so I can't really describe what the event's about. When you go into the Rusty Nail, go into the D door that's uh, on the left. Oops, can someone talk to the the dude at the barrier? I forgot to do that. Thank you. So there's just a guy at the barrier that you had talked to, and you gotta come up here and talk to Vahir. And uh, you can also ask him, like, can you give me some aid? And he'll he'll put some buffs on you. But usually, you know, if you're doing this epic, it's usually buffs. You know, if, if the group buffed, it's it's going to be redundant. But for what it's worth. And also, f if you're interested in the trivia of of, uh, of the raid, there's Sidony and Vela are hanging out back here behind the tower. Vela is the red dragon that you fight in the... Uh, in the Vault of Night Raid, and she's here in elven form. So just go back through the D-door, and now we're going to fight a whole bunch of mobs in the marketplace. Oh, also, if you are a crafter, you can buy flame-touched weapons from the flame-touched weapon vendor here in the uh, tavern, and you can actually take those out and use them as crafting blanks. Flame-touched weapons uh, act as good flagged weapons to overcome DR. So we're going to do optionals and that means we're going to just be killing a bunch of trash mobs in the marketplace. So go ahead and exit the tavern and go up the steps. When you join pugs of this raid, whether or not they do the optionals, um, there, there's no standard. Some groups will do it because it's extra XP. Some groups don't want to do it because it takes extra time. So at this point, what a lot of people are going to do is just kind of split off and just kill stuff. But uh, if you're if you're newer and you're not really self-sufficient, you might want to stay close to me or another healer. And there's just going to be uh, some tieflings, some bearded devils and some flying uh, Abishai's. I'll come get you. I'll come get you. Just step out, Just of, the step out of the tavern. And one of the optionals is to revive the Stormreach citizens that you see around. Now one of the things you want to be careful in this part of the raid, if you are doing the optionals and killing stuff, if people are splitting up, it, it can make the dungeon alert spike quite a bit. Uh, you get a red DA really easy, and if you start aggroing a bunch of mobs, it can start to get a little overwhelming for some folks. If you're newer, I'm by the bank at the moment. Heading north. And like I said, we're just running around the marketplace just killing trash. Once we kill all the trash, we're going to go inside the bank, but please don't go there until we do all the optionals. If you're with a good group, too, it's worth it. It doesn't take a whole lot of time, and it is decent XP.
I'm right here, Danarus. Just follow me through the D door here. And if you look in the quest box in the upper right, you can see it says that we've got th uh, to reduce the double air legions by three. That means there are three more Abishais to kill to get that optional, and 32 other trash mobs. And like I said, the map is exactly the same as the marketplace. There are, I mean, there are some slight modifications just to make it look like you know there's been a big battle. So there's like some ramps and things that have fallen over and stuff. And the two taverns are there, and those are basically safe spots. If you ever need to get away from mobs, you can always go into uh, one of the taverns. Sometimes they follow you in there, but usually they don't. They're not supposed to. Sometimes they cheat. And both of the taverns also have rest shrines in them. One more Abishai. Nice. We got ten grand for that. Oh yeah, cool dude. Do what you gotta do. Six more mobs to go, and then we're going to meet at the bank. And the mailbox that's there in front of the bank is a chest, so help yourself to that.
mob here at the front. At the bank? All right, everybody go ahead and start making your way over to the bank. You can even step inside of it, but don't get started, please. Don't go beyond the entrance of the bank. And again, help yourself to the to the chest, which is the mailbox outside of the bank. Well, somebody grab my stone over here by the bar. I'm coming, I got it. I'm going to go ahead and shrine up too. Anybody that needs to shrine up, there's going to be a big fight here coming up next in the bank. If you need to shrine up prior to that, you can use the shrine in the tavern just to the left of the bank. It's right here on the left, Karinu. Go ahead and step right into the bank. Just don't move beyond the entrance of it. We do have a lot of druids here, so I do want to mention, in case anybody's not aware, that um, for those of you who are caster druids and are going to be using your cold dots, your creeping cold and greater creeping cold, those do not work in, con in conjunction with other druids' dots. So, you know, if you have multiple druids casting greater creeping cold, for example, on a single mob, you're just going to keep overwriting each other's spell. So sometimes it's worth sort of coordinating with other caster druids in a raid and figuring out like who's going to be dotting the boss, for example. In this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and dot up the main boss. So I don't want any of the other druids dotting him up, please. Looks like we're all inside the bank. And so there's going to be a, a named Orthon. You can see he's, if you look up, you can see he's up there now with two Shavrath armors to his side, standing from a portal. So we're going to fight him. That's a blood plate. There's going to be some trash mobs that spawn in waves. And when those trash mobs spawn, we want to take out the armors first because I'm not sure if they're healing him or if they're actually adding to his armor. But in any event, they do they do help him out, so you want to you want to take out those first. Oh, well, that beats my 25. I go ahead and step forward, folks. After we beat down Blood Plate for a bit, he is going to disappear like he just did, and then we're going to deal with a wave of trash, and then he's going to come back. And that'll repeat until he's dead. Is 
that better with me using this mic so you guys hear me better? Yeah, it's definitely not crackly. It's way better. All right, now we get our first chests that actually have named loot in them. The base items in this raid are all common drops. If you don't need them, please give them away to others. And you can just put them up for roll. We do have a lot of people in here that uh, are newer or first timers. Sometimes you get a wave of trash like this after the boss is dead. And the loot in here is all bound to account, so you can pass it to another one of your tunes. Go ahead and shrine up. That's a nice, uh, that armor is pretty nice. For level 4, it's got spell resistance 19. It's, an, it's pretty nice armor for heavy armor wear. I'm asking, or I'm, I'm going to ask that all High Lords refrain from rolling on loot in this raid. At least for base items, please. You're more than welcome to, to roll on shards and seals. Uh -huh. I wanted to destroy my hundreds, Jim, of many facets. Uh, once you're done there, folks, you can step out of the raid, and we're going to go right into the tavern. Or you can, excuse me, not step out of the raid. Don't step out of the raid. <laughs> I missed both. You can step out of the bank and go immediately to the right into the tavern. Do not, do not forget to talk to the bank teller while you're in there, otherwise you won't have the key. But don't you, you have to talk to Tremus first. Nope. You can talk to him first. Five times I've had to use the key. Yep, so you got to come in here and talk to Tremus, which I just did. And then if somebody who's still in the bank could talk to the teller to get the key, that would be great. So I don't have to run back. Is there someone there that grabbed it? Thank you. 
you just you get the key if you guys weren't following along. Tremus here just tells you to get a key, which you get from the teller inside the bank. Right there at the window by the chest. Nope, just go to the tavern at this point. Oh, you're already here, I see. Yeah, we're going to talk to Tremus. person that had the key had talked to him. And he's going to talk about his evil plans. And then we're going to get a chest. And then we're going to go to the next fight, the next big fight. Go ahead and help yourself to this chest. Oops, gotta talk to Nell first. And let's not D-door at this point, folks. I just want all the new folks to see where we're actually going. So after you get your chest there, go ahead and leave the tavern. And we're gonna run over to the, where the entrance of the steam tunnels is. Which is right where we came in. Most groups are going to detour back to the start because that way you don't have to run through the market and potentially aggro a bunch of mobs if, if you're with a group that didn't clear it. It could, it could be really messy here if you were actually running back. But we'll be just fine. I'm just having us do the run instead of detouring so you understand where we're supposed to be going. You want to hang out here at the entrance to the steam tunnels. And then I got to go up top to talk to Vahir again. So he'll open up the way. Alright, the team the steam tunnels should be open. Go ahead and step in there. Like we're missing Danaris. Oh, I did not want to start yet, folks. We're missing one person. But here we're fighting a bl uh, another named Orthon, named Razor Arm. There's going to be a bunch of trash as well, and Razor Arm is going to teleport around. It's okay, Danaris. I'm going to come grab you. I'm going to figure out where you're at. Out here, and I'm on his dot, but I don't see. Oh, there he is. Step back in, and we'll give you the chest real quick. I think he got the chest already. Yeah, he said he was lagging, and he missed it. Oh, okay. Gonna lead him over here, Ziffin. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be right there. Thank you. Yeah, let's not get the next part started uh, before everybody's here, because like Danaris is gonna miss this whole part. Yeah, I thought everybody was here. Oh, it's all right.
So you miss a little fight with a named Orthon here, Danaris, no big deal. Uh, some trash as well, but go ahead and just jump down to the bottom of the area. There's going to be two chests that you can help yourself to. More named loot in here. If you don't have your three and five piece chrono sets for your TR tunes, it's a good idea to grab the pieces for those. Actually, I guess that stuff doesn't drop to the end chest, does it? No, but the crossbow drops here. Hell yeah. There's three in the chest, three crossbows in the chest. So if anyone needs them. Go ahead and step through the portal after you have looted your two chests. And we're going to wait till everybody gets inside before we start. This is the final fight, by the way. But before I explain how it works, does anybody have any questions about anything that's been going on in the raid so far? What can be confusing for people that are newer to the raid is just kind of figuring out where the group is if you don't know where to go next. We're seeing a little bit of that now. so. But it's always going, going, you know, going to the bank first. And then from the bank you go over to the steam tunnels and then steam tunnels to here. And then there's some optionals that you can do along the way. So here we're going to fight uh, we're going to fight and beat down five Abishais and once we beat them down they're going to form up like Voltron into one big giant Abishai Devastator dude. And then we're going to beat down the Devastator and then we'll win. There's going to be trash mobs of devils that spawn. You used to need a proper tank for uh, this boss, but not so much anymore. Uh, especially if you're doing it on just like epic normal or epic hard. But he used to be kind of a pain. And what he does is he will change into different dragons, and he'll you know he'll do different dragon breaths and stuff. But usually, anymore groups would just pounce on him and beat him down. And it's over in a, in a minute or so. But if you're ever with a group that's struggling, um, and, you know, it's definitely good for like if a person can hold his aggro or, or you know tank him, it to uh, keep him over here away from the party, and keep him faced away from where the party is, so that when he's doing his dragon breath, he's not breathing all over everybody.
But in this case, everybody can just collapse on him and beat him down. You can see he's doing curses now, so you definitely want to bring curse pots. You want to always have curse pots with you. And that is all. Now you get to watch uh, Professor Tremus get owned by Sulamadis up here. And usually people just detour at this point. Do not put up a detour right now. I just want to let the new folks watch what happens. And if you're ever with a group and they're detouring and you happen to miss the detour, maybe you were running around to get the collectibles that are around the outside of this area right now, and you miss the detour, that's okay. There's going to be a portal that comes up uh, right over here in front of where these guys are where uh, Sulamadis and Tremus are right now. But that's all the fighting. We're just going to go loot now. If anybody has any questions about any part of the raid, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, thanks for coming. Go ahead and take the portal. Also, if you don't take the portal and you go AFK at that part, uh, you will die because it, the tent that we're in does explode. Uh, after you go through the portal, you just want to go into the Rusty Nail Tavern, which is basically as soon as you leave, or as soon as you go through the portal, and go to the back left of the rusty nail and into the D door which will take us to the top of the tower and if you watch uh, if you look at the center of the marketplace and you can see the tent and that's what that used to actually be in the marketplace as I was referring to year, uh, years ago there was a special event and the the old the vendors that you see now or that are there now in the marketplace didn't used to be there there was a tent you would go in all the vendors were there but uh, if you watch the tent, you'll see it actually explode. All right, we are all here. Put your voices on. And let's talk to over here to finish it.
Rats on your levels. Do you want to let the... Probably join, probably join the teaching radar from the chest? No, it doesn't matter. Alright folks, that is all. Help yourself to all the chests. Hey, does everyone here, the new people, understand the importance of the tokens that you get out of the epic chest? Oh, good question, man. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, that's something I don't think I ever yeah, you thought to mention in any of the teaching raids that we've ever done. Well, you can buy... You need him to make a master you, you can buy, uh... True Druidic Hearts, which you can use the TR for 20 tokens. You can also buy uh, other, um... Augments from the Epic Vendor in the 12 with uh, Epic Tokens. And you can, and like Gentis just said, you can use a few of them to make your master's gift. If you don't know what that is, if you examine that shamanic fetish, you'll see that in the colorless slot there's something called the master's gift. And you can make that by combining your voice of the master from to the Delirious chain and your mantle of the world shaper from the Threnal chain. And you can slot that 5% uh, XP bonus. And you do that right there at the epic altar in the 12. Hey guys, if all these items are bound to a count, remember that. I mean, if nothing else, grab them and throw them in the bank in case you make new characters later. Yep, for sure. You definitely want to get your uh, your chrono set for TRing. And the gem of many facets is broken so there's no point in holding on to those. Any of the new folks want a set of scorched bracers? Lots of scorched bracers sitting in the chest. If you don't have them, there's a helm of frost as well, it looks like. You definitely want to get your chrono set. So it's a nice three or five piece set for like level five, six, seven ish. Not so valuable beyond that. Some people still wear the uh the epic set. It can be pretty nice. Yeah, I'll put the four of them in my party chat. That's how they turn out. They're good at level twenty. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. Hi, Lord. Thanks for helping out with the event. There'll be another teaching raid next Saturday at 9 o'clock. I haven't decided what it's going to be yet, but I will post on the forums. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming. And the video of this event will be posted on my YouTube channel probably tonight or tomorrow night. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Raids are usually confusing your first time, and it does take some practice. It takes a few t tries bef or times before you know you figure out where you're supposed to be and stuff. But that'll come with time. Thanks again for coming, folks. Y'all have a good one.